the housing crisis worsened and banks and hedge funds that invested heavily in subprime mortgage, mortgages were left holding assets whose value had declined substantially. Freddie Mac stated in February 2007 that they would no longer purchase the most risky subprime loans. In April, New Century Financial, a subprime mortgage lender, filed for bankruptcy court protection. In August, American Home Mortgage Investment, with specialized in adjustable rate mortgages, filed for bankruptcy protection. In 2008, the US economy was in recession and the subprime mortgage crisis infected the credit markets. In January of 2008, Bank of America agreed to buy Countrywide Financial for about $4 billion. In March, the Federal Reserve agreed to guarantee $30 billion of Bear Stearns assets in connection with the government-sponsored sale of investment bank to J.P. Morgan Chase. In July, IndyMac Federal Bank became the largest regulated thrift to fail. By September, mortgage giants Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae were taken over by the government. On September 15th, Bank of America agreed to purchase Merrill Lynch for $50 billion. Also that day, Lehman Brothers filed for bankruptcy court protection. On the 16th, AIG accepted an $85 billion federal bailout that gave the bank a 79, gave the government a 79.9% stake in the company. On the 21st, Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley filed to become bank holding companies. On the 25th, federal regulators closed Washington Mutual Bank and its branches, and assets were sold, sold to J.P. Morgan Chase. On October 3rd, Congress passed a revised version of TARP, and Wells Fargo agreed to acquire Wachovia for about $14.8 billion. On November 23rd, Citigroup was rescued with a package of guarantees, funding access, and capital. Citi issued preferred shares to the Treasury and FDIC in exchange for protection against losses on a $360 billion pool of commercial and residential securities it held. And then on December 19th, the US Treasury authorized loans of up to $13.4 billion for GM and $4 billion for Chrysler from TARP. All of us can recall these events as they unfolded in 2007 and 2008. We are also aware of the many reasons given for these events. Individuals were said to have been over leveraged with the greatest leverage increase occurring for middle income borrowers. Over eager lenders and financial institutions chasing yield added to the problem. Governments, central banks, regulators and legislatures played a role by keeping interest rates low, by allowing leverage to increase dramatically, by allowing government sponsored enterprises to operate at an inadequate level of capitalization and by exempting OTC derivatives from regulation. The rating agencies played an important role in facilitating the leverage boom and to some extent non-financial businesses saw their leverage increase as well. Now the finance industry's failures have continued subsequent to the financial crisis. The banking sector has had its share of scandals ranging from allegations of trading scams and money laundering to manipulating LIBOR and foreign exchange rates, among others. On the non-financial corporate side, the post-crisis period has seen its share of changes as well. The administration in Washington and the press have focused their efforts on several issues, among them calling on US non-financial firms to reduce their holdings of cash. They've also focused on executive pay and on decreasing the pay gap between the average worker and the CEO. Some activist investors and hedge funds have focused their efforts on getting firms to disgorge themselves of the over 1.7 trillion in cash held by US non-financial firms by pushing for changes in payout policy. They've also taken an active role in shaping corporate governance by trying to get firms to change their business model by busting up the firm or by getting them to divest assets. On the security market side, changes are underway in how markets are regulated, where and how trades occur, among other changes. So we seem to have some sense of why the crisis happened and are aware of all that has happened in the industry subsequent to the crisis. So this seems to be an opportune time to turn to what we have learned from the crisis, what has changed, what should change, and what the future holds for finance and the finance procession, profession. To turn to these issues, I've asked...